Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. That was actually one of my, my favorite songs. I'm huh? just saying. All right, DJ Cardo, I see you. <laughs> All right, so Panama is a country of many firsts. It's a Central American country of many firsts. And this morning, I have the absolute honor to welcome on via Zoom the first Afro-Panamanian ambassador to Trinidad and Tobago, Her Excellency Salvia Miller. Welcome, Your Excellency. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And welcome to Trinidad and Tobago. I know that uh, you you arrived here in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic. So how yes. has that experience been for you coming into a, a relatively new country in the middle of one of the worst health crises of this time? Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for giving me the space to speak to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And um, I visited Tobago last year, last week, and I was so pleased I felt at home. Um, for the question, in order to come into Trinidad in the year 2020, it was, it was a challenge. Right. Because of the difficulties with the flights, we have to go through two countries in order to come here, to arrive here. And it, it was crazy, challenging and crazy, <laughs> but I'm here. I could just imagine, I know you, you just mentioned that you visited Tobago uh, last week. So could you yes. tell me a little bit about uh, your visit to Tobago? That piece is actually really lovely. Oh yes, it is indeed. Um, my appointment is Ambassador of Panama in Trinidad and Tobago. But through the COVID situation, I was not able to pay the correspondent courtesy visit to Tobago because of the lack of flights, all the situations that were surrounding the COVID. Therefore, um, I decided to take this opportunity in which things are getting a, a bit clearer and, uh, and we have a little bit more access to go and pay the respective visit. I owe it to Tobago. Yes. And uh, my welcoming was awesome. Yes. I well, felt at home. You can, you can tell that Tobagonians are very welcoming oh. and warm oh, persons. Yes. yes. What are some of the similarities yes. did you, you found between the people of Tobago specifically and um, your people in Panama? Well, um, I usually say that in Trinidad, I'm at home. I feel at home. I'm, I'm very comfortable. Since I come from a province whose uh, the highest percentage of population is Afro-descendant or afro panamanian But when I went to Tobago, I felt like if I were in, I was in Colombia, where I come from. <laughs> and specifically, the idiosyncrasy is so similar to the people of Colón. I mean, it was crazy. Um, even though I don't eat much, but the, <laughs> it was crazy, even with the food, but I don't eat much. I do not eat that much. And they're just like the people of Cologne. They wanted you to eat everything that they can offer. And I am not too particular eating. <laughs> I take it easy. I take it easy. I, oh, I, I'm seeing some footage of you here um, in the oh market. Yeah. Yes. How was that experience getting to meet the people on the ground? Oh my goodness, this was awesome. I have to send this information to Panama and the pictures to my people in Panama. And I told them that this is this this is one of the things that if we have to copy from Tobago is the market. The market is awesome. I've never been into a place in which you can go and have breakfast in the mornings at the market. I mean, that was an awesome experience. Awesome experience. I enjoyed it very much. And this is one of the things that it really impresses me. Besides all the other things that we have in common, the idiosyncrasy, uh, the culture, very African oriented, um, the, 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 the area of tourism, and all some of the things that I see that we could work with in, in, in regards of trading, um, the experience of being at the market on a Saturday morning is priceless. 
<laughs> it's definitely an experience. Uh, it's definitely oh, yes. an experience. Now, before you were ambassador, Your Excellency, you were, are an educator, because I know when persons say that they have taught, they say they are lifelong educators. So you are an educator, and you're also a cultural manager. So is this the reason why you think that you can relate so specifically, especially since um, we have so many similarities here? Do you think that is the reason why you can relate so specifically to Trinidad and Tobago? Exactly. I'm a professor at the University of Panama. I've been a professor, a teacher for 35 years. And I've worked, I'm work, I worked at the University of Panama for almost 15 years. I'm in a recess now because of this position, but I'm, I'm, I'm an English professor at the University of Panama, but I also, I have founded a cultural group and an organization in Panama, which is called Fundación de la Etnia Negra in Panama, which main objective is to teach about our African heritage. And I am also now the president of Afro Festival Internacional de Panama, which is uh, one of the things that really uh, invites me to go to Tobago because I see, I could see uh, through the television, specifically this channel, which I watch very much, of the, the African heritage in the culture and the practices that the people of Tobago have. So this is one of the reasons why I really wanted to be there. Um, being the president of the Afro Festival Panama Internacional, it is, it is very important for me to have these links so that when things get back to normal, we can have this exchange of culture. We are also talking about trading and uh, tourism of shopping to Panama. I do not know if you have been to Panama, but shopping in, shopping in Panama is a bit interesting, especially for the prices and and visiting the sites that we have is incredible. Even I though not. I have seen <clears throat> sites here, but I mean, Panama is an experience too. Yeah. So this I is- I have not yeah. actually been to, to Panama just yet. It is definitely on my bucket list. So, uh, but yeah. I want to I wanna move a little, I, I want to move quickly into, um, you, you spoke about uh, trading and exchange between Trinidad and Tobago. And I know that the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, the Bridgetown Accord, talks about the digital exchange, digital cultural exchange. Could we get an update on, on where that is? Okay, everybody has to get into the digital exchange now. Uh, last year we have, um, at the embassy we have uh, Business uh, business room table in which we invite uh, uh, businesses and companies from Trinidad and Tobago to take part of a, a virtual meeting in order to contact the different companies at the Colon Free Zone to purchase their products. Right now, um, Trinidad is at the Expo Commerce in Panama, which uh, started yesterday, okay, at the Centro de Convenciones at Clapa. Export TT. We have, there are several companies, and the Embassy of Trinidad and Tobago in Panama is also there, saying present in regards of all the business and trade, uh, because we have several agreements uh, with Trinidad and Tobago, and there is also a MOU of um, partial trade. So we are working to towards all these agreements and to renew some of the things that we have already had here because Trinidad and Tobago had had a relationship with Panama since 1995, something like that. I cannot recall very well, but it's been a quite while. So we are trying to yeah. renew all these um, agreements that we have, and we're looking forward to do to have many more and to develop the exchange of culture and business in 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 both areas. Yeah, in I'm both definitely countries. definitely looking forward to that because as you as you mentioned, Trinidad and Tobago, we have a a, a lot of 
interesting artist here that I, I think that would benefit from a relationship like that with Panama. Now, as we wind down this interview, this is my last question, Your Excellency. What legacy do you want to leave in Trinidad and Tobago uh, after your tenure is over? Ah, uh, what will I say? There are so many things that I would like to do here. But one of the things that I would really, will really like to do is um, this cultural function, or, or I will say this cultural exchange between uh, Panama and Tobago. I want it to be get uh, uh, stronger. Uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, in Panama, we have always been um, close to Trinidad and Tobago through music. For instance, Mike Tisparo, he is a hero in Panama. And uh, there are some other Calypsonians that we know. I, I would like to have more contact with the people of the steel pan and the people that has this African oriented heritage very clear because um, in recent studies, I have learned that we are not as far as we think that we are from Africa. Right uh, in the month of May, we are having in the Panama an activity which is called uh, Reconciliation and Return, which they are inviting kings and queens from Africa to have a gathering with the brothers and sisters of the diaspora. So I know that we are very close to the Caribbean. So if there is anything that I would like to do in this period of time, which is very short through the COVID, I would like to do this, have this gap of culture very, very short and very close to Trinidad, from Panama to Trinidad and Tobago in all the aspects, because there are many, many, many things that we have in plan to do in this short period of time but we are going to try to do it the best that we can. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us this morning. And I hope one day to visit Panama and go up to the, the tallest mountain. Is it the Volcan, is it Volcan Baru? Um, yes, Volcan the tallest Baru. mountain, so I could see the sunset I from the over the Atlantic Ocean. It's very cold. <laughs> it's very cold. <laughs> That's okay. I think I'll, 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 I'll take the trek. I'll take the trek. I love a good sunset. But thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us this morning for having me in your program.